please. So for the next half hour or so, I'm going to be turning it over to you, my friend. You're going to be breaking down Thor Ragnarok, and you're going to be letting us know whether or not it is a good movie to watch. Okay. All you, my friend. All, my, all me? All on the floor? All take right. it, take it. Well, okay. So with the previous two Thor movies, we had probably one of the weaker Marvel films, I would say. I do like the first Thor movie. I think it's a great movie. I thought it was a great introduction to the character, but I understood why a lot of people were disappointed. There wasn't enough Norse mythology in it. It was more of a, hey, look, Thor is a fish out of water story, and he's on Earth, and he's getting used to everything on here. And then we had Thor The Dark World, which isn't one of the best Marvel sequels. It's one of the lowest ones. A lot of people did not like this movie at all. It was just unimaginative. It was lazy for a sequel. So walking into Thor Ragnarok, I was worried. Because we came off of two movies. Even though I like the first one, coming off that last one is just not good at all. But I was worried with the trailers, the posters, and how like promotions were handled. That this was getting a straight-up Guardians of the Galaxy makeover. And for the longest time, I was thinking to myself, well, I just saw Guardians of the Galaxy this summer as well. Do I really need another Guardians this summer? And to mention, I didn't think Guardians 2 was that great of a movie either. So I'm a little burnt out over the whole cosmic space feel with marvel and i was kind of getting a little tired of it so coming as i said the first film and the second film to an extent had this shakespearean uh feel to it and that's because kenneth uh Branagh directed the first film and you know he's known for his shakespearean films like hamlet and other films he's made but they didn't sell to a mass audience and the second film tried doing that as well and once again it just it, it didn't make enough money at the box office but it wasn't a big marvel hit so it's coming off of a bad sequel, which was Ragnarok, like I said. And Thor happens to be one of those characters that I believe is shafted in m m many Marvel films, like Age of Ultron or Civil War. Age of Ultron, he's just there to set up future spinoffs and sequels with the Infinity Stones, if you know what they are. And Civil War, he's not even present, as, and all the other like A-list like Avengers are there. Hawkeye, Captain America, Iron Man, they're all featured in that film. He seems to be the character that has the biggest hill to climb. Even as the film started for the first 20, 25 minutes, I was feeling, ah, this just feels like the average Marvel movie, and I began to worry. However, I can safely say that Thor Ragnarok is the Thor movie that I believe fans have been waiting for and that I have been waiting for. The film proves that the character Thor in the Norse mythology can be used with the right Right, r the right writers and directors to make something creative and fun. In this sequel, Thor is imprisoned on the other side of the universe by the Grand Master and finds himself in a race against time to get back to Asgard, his homeworld, to stop Ragnarok, the destruction of it. The end of civilization for the Asgardian, the end of Asgardian civilization, excuse me, at the hands of the all-new powerful threat, the ruthless Hela, the goddess of death. This time around, director Taiki, uh, Taika Watiti brings some of the best comedy in Thor, or even in some Marvel movies, I would say, yet. And he's done a great job using the Norse mythology with the character as well, which I felt has been underutilized throughout the entire run of the Thor movies. Ragnarok is filled with plenty of big laughs and subtle humor. The film gives you enough time to take in the jokes and scenes, it's just not rapid fire of jokes and slapstick humor, similar to Guardians 2, which is why I was kind of burnt out over that, and even the previous story movie, The Dark World, which even the film blatantly bashes in the previous installment in a scene where they perform for in a scene where a play is performed for Odin and the people of Asgard, and even the dialogue mentioning previous characters like Natalie Portman or Kat Dennings. It just blatantly ba bashes the previous film. How the comedy is done well, it can be give credit to Watiti and, of course, Chris Hemsworth performance along with the great use of supporting cast members. Hemsworth, I believe, has found his calling. While, yes, he can pull off the action hero, Hemsworth truly shines when it comes to comedy. His delivery throughout his performance is near perfect. Thor never, Thor never came across annoying when he gloats about himself, claiming to be the strongest Avenger, even clearly when it's Hulk, who does appear in the film, which I'll touch on later, or when he acts like an idiot sometimes by telling somebody, you could have sent me an email if you wanted to contact me, and the person asks him, well, do you even own a computer? And he's like, no, what would be the point of owning a computer? Just stuff like that made me laugh out loud or qu quietly chuckle to myself because I just found it hilarious. And it's enough space and it doesn't have that awkward pause that you're supposed to be like, this is when you laugh. It just continues to go on and go on. When it comes time for Hemsworth to take on the leading action star, he pulls it off fine. And the film has some of the best action in Marvel movies that I've seen in a while. The Hulk versus Thor fight and even the climax fight is done very well since the stakes are high in the climax. And the resolution to the climax 
is actually has some very bad consequences. As for the characters, we have Tom Hiddleston returning as Loki, and he's terrific as ever. The relationship between Loki and Thor this time around is examined, I think, the best, and we, get, and we really get a sense of them being brothers for a very long time. Throughout the past few films, you always thought, well, yeah, they're brothers, but I never really got it. Here, you hear stories about them, and the way they interact feels like real brotherly chemistry, and there's even an emotion scene with their father, Odin, played by Anthony Hopkins. The two do a really good job with in the scene with him. Both have great comedic timing and actually share, like I said, emotional scenes with together. And as I said earlier, Hulk is in this movie and he's used very effectively. He doesn't feel like he's crowbarred in. He does feel like a part of the story. He's not just there for that big fight between Thor. We get some great moments with Thor and Hulk that feel like Hulk is the baby brother of the family. And Mark Ruffalo does a great job of portraying Bruce Banner once again. Jeff Goldblum is also in the film. He plays the Grand Master, a flamboyant over overlord that rules over this city that Thor is being kept prison in, where they have gladiatorial games in which Thor and Hulk participate in. One scene that truly shows what kind of villain he's like is when he kills one person, turns them in the ooze, and complains about it getting all over the floor and all over his clothes, and that dry Jeff Goldblum voice as always. Lastly, Kate Blanchett does a great job at playing the villain Hela, the goddess, the goddess of death, who feels like a legitimate threat and does a great job at just chewing the scenery and scenes that she's featured in. Her origin story to how she fits into the Norse mythology and Thor's world is very fascinating. And seeing where that all lies which with, with Thor and Odin as his... Yeah, with Thor and Odin. These characters are so good and well-written when they are not in scenes together, I feel like it comes to a halt. There's even some scenes where Hela is sometimes given the cliche X-Men Apocalypse dialogue where she gives the traditional villain dialogue of I will destroy everything they build, they will bow down to me. But even then, those are very few scenes with her. It's just the scenes not featured with these characters that are very slow and sluggish, such as the returning characters of Thor's gang of heroes. If you were a big fan of these people, such as Lady Sif and all those other minor characters, well, I have some bad news. They're not really featuring in the film, and the send-off to them is not that great. Idris Elba is a character named Heimdall, and he's underused in the film. He's not in it that much, and the time that he is in it, it's not really serving that much. It does serve a purpose to the story, but he's just there for little screen time that it feels like they could have just had somebody else do the role. Carl Urban is also in the movie as a new character named Scourge, but he's just a one note character that will join the villain and switch sides when we finally need him to help us. Finally, Valkyrie, who gets the most screen time out of all the newest characters, is just the typical I'm tough and I don't show emotions one note character that just you can sound from the sound of the description is just that one note character of I'm just tough I don't like to show my emotions visually the oh the film is beautiful it has great color looks that looks like a psychedelic trip similar to how the posters have been for this film there are some shots that are honestly breathtaking due to the Norse mythology that they use here more than ever. There's one scene where you see the Valkyrie soldiers riding towards Hela in a battle as daggers and spears are thrown between the two. And just the shot alone is very beautiful. It looks like a painting that you would find in a Norse mythology book or something. However, the CGI in the film isn't the best Marvel has put out. It looks out of place sometimes. Characters stand out and you can tell when it's green screen. There are occasions where full CGI characters such as the Hulk are given great personalities, such as a new character that's a talking rock golem voiced by the director Watiti, who was one of the most memorable minor characters Marvel has ever created. He's basically a giant rock golem that has this very pleasant and subtle voice to him. And like you're thinking it's going to be a deep voice. And then when he starts talking, it's this very nice Australian man that's just wants to be very comforting to you and when it's revealed it's just kind of funny and just seeing him being like oh yeah you know i'm just here to help you and everything it's just funny seeing that coming out of a giant rock golem you get when you get great char minor characters like that you can forgive the cg to an extent but there are moments where i was like that's even bad by marvel standards Overall, I think Thor Ragnarok is definitely a good Marvel movie. It didn't do anything outstanding like previously this year with Spider-Man Homecoming, which was impressive since it was the sixth time they made a Spider-Man film, but yet it still felt fresh to the Spider-Man movies. This time around, Thor did get something creative to his character, and they actually used the Norse mythology this time around, but it didn't feel like anything big or too drastic from a typical Marvel movie. But it did do a great job at what it's set out to do. Overall, I think Thor Ragnarok is definitely a movie you should check out over this weekend. If you haven't seen the previous Thor movies, I think you'll be fine. This honestly feels like a soft reboot to Thor, just to try and attract a wider audience, ditching the whole uh, Shakespearean feel to it and getting rid of some of the other minor characters that fans were not a big 
you know, not big of, or even audience members as well. I give Thor Ragnarok three out of four stars, and I believe that you should try to check it out over the week time. Okay, how's the? Because I, I, I know the trailers because I've seen that I've been inundated watching the trailers, even though I haven't seen the film. But like, I could tell that there's a big that humor plays a big part in this, or at least Definitely. that's at least how the tra trailer plays. How is the humor? How is the humor comparable to other Marvel movies? Because Marvel's kind of hit and miss. It depends on who's writing it. Like, there's a difference between Spider-Man: Homecoming humor and Age of Ultron humor. Yeah. There's a big difference. How does Thor Ragnarok this, rank up with quips and humor? Okay, if you've ever seen um, Taika Waititi's other films, such as What We Do in the Shadows, that is a very fun, like, mockumentary on these people trying to, like... They're interviewing vampires the entire time and how they live on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's just absurd and crazy humor. Thor Ragnarok does have, like, that absurd, crazy humor, but it's also very subtle and clever. They're, like, there's plenty of times, like, okay... When he talks to Hulk, he tells him, he's like, oh, I've always hated Banner. You know, him with his stupid PhDs. I've always hated him. I never got along with him. But when Hulk transforms back to Banner, he's like, what? I always loved you, Banner. I, you know, I hate that Hulk. You know, him always going around, oh, I want to smash everything. He's just he's just annoying. Like, just little things like that. It, it, and it, they don't, like, have that big pause for you to laugh. It just keeps going. It's just very fast. But it is very subtle about it, too, like I said. It, it is very clever. I would say it's more on the homecoming side, definitely. Good to hear. Good to hear that. So right now, as it currently stands, um, we are about in the middle of Phase 3 of Marvel. We got about four four to five more movies coming up. Phase yeah. 3 is going to take us into 2019. It looks like after Phase 3, it looks like Phase 4 is going to start in the middle of the summer of 2019 with the uh, Spider-Man Homecoming sequel. Okay. So, so far with Phase 3, we've gotten Captain America Civil War, which I really liked. Uh, Doctor Strange, which I enjoyed. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, we were talking on break. We were both not very uh, very big fans of that. Spider-Man Homecoming, which I love and I would probably say is the best that I've seen of Phase 3 Marvel. Uh, and then we have Thor Ragnarok. So how does Thor compare to the pr to the previous, the previous four ones? of Phase 3? Just um, Phase 3. Just Phase For three. me, uh, you said that you know uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming is your favorite. For me, it's Civil War. Then That's it a would close be, second. Yeah, then it would be Homecoming, and then honestly, it would probably be this movie, Strange, and then Guardians. Um, okay. Only because uh, I, I, with Strange, the problem I had with the humor is that there's like, there's sometimes the humor in Doctor Strange is like. It's not done the best, honestly, in my opinion. What makes Doctor Strange stand out for me and what I did like about it was the visuals. Like, that's what carried it a lot for me. It wasn't really the humor. With this, it's the humor and the visuals, Thor. So that's why it just gets that step up above Doctor Strange. Which, uh, by the way, I would give Doctor Strange the same rating. Three stars, honestly. Yeah, I liked I, I liked Doctor Strange for what it was. It didn't have much staying power with me, though. Yeah. It really didn't. I, I, I hate to kind of say that, too. For their that's going to be the forgotten Marvel movie, yeah. Yeah, for their origin movies, like you would think they do a better job because they honestly, I would say when it comes to Marvel, when it's time for to like have an origin movie, they've always knocked it out of the park. Doctor Strange was like to me that one where it's like, ooh, this one wasn't that great, honestly. Yeah, and that was the one too that was like. They kind of, and maybe maybe I maybe I'm not remembering it as well as I could be, but like that was the one that kind of felt like they really felt like they ham fisted Doctor Strange in. It didn't feel like he totally he, fit in the world. They, you know, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I couldn't see this guy popping up, and maybe I'm wrong. I couldn't see him popping up in an Avengers movie and fitting very uh, well, well. Funny enough, this isn't a spoiler. He's in the trailers. He makes a cameo in Thor Ragnarok. Oh, he does. Okay, and that's cool. Like Benedict Cumberbatch does a great job as he did in, in Doctor Strange. Um. But here's the thing, he feels so crowbarred in, honestly, in this movie. He makes like a two-minute cameo. Hulk. Unlike, Unlike Hulk. Unlike Hulk. Hulk feels perfectly fine. He plays into the story for a purpose and everything. This one, however, and same thing with Loki too, plays a purpose to the story. When it comes to Doctor Strange, he's only there for, I said, like two minutes. But if you never saw Doctor Strange, let's say you didn't see it and you skipped it and you just didn't get a chance to see it on Netflix or whatnot – you would have been like, wait, what's happening? And you would have been expecting the whole time, so when is he going to show back up? Because it's like, he shows up, he gives like, um, basically like just uh, a bunch of, uh, oh my god, I'm forgetting the word here, where you just explain stuff throughout a movie. Exposition. Exposition. He just gives some exposition of what we've been missing, and then it's just like, he's on his way out. And it's just like, okay, you could have done that with somebody else. You could have done that with Odin. You could have done that with Loki. You could have done that with some character that serves a purpose to the story. When he shows up and it just vanishes, honestly, I was thinking, I'm like, so is he going to show back up now? Because I'm like... That's always odd. Yeah, it's not, like you have a big odd. Marvel hero like that. You would think they would show back up. 
Yeah, that's that's kind of strange. I will say that. Yeah, it is kind of strange. <laughs> but <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, so then, two more two more questions. <laughs> then the the last one I'm going to say for the last. Cause I don't know how good of a question this is, really. But um, but you mentioned before that you were not the biggest fan of Thor: The Dark World. Explain your dissatisfaction with the Dark World. My, the second th- the second the second movie in the Thor series, the first sequel. So so over the break, we were also talking about sequels to Marvel movies and how like some of them are hit and miss, and some of them like a lot of people consider like the worst, like Iron Man two. Um, I, I wouldn't consider Iron Man 2 that bad of a sequel. It's not my personal favorite, but something like Winter Soldier or Civil War, you look at those sequels and they really knock it out of the park. To me, Thor The Dark World is the worst sequel they've done. It's just because they played it really safe. They didn't do anything new. And what they did, it was like, okay, what did people like about the first movie? Okay, Asgard, Thor's, hor- Thor's home world show more of that but they didn't do anything with asgard it was just look there's asgard we're in asgard isn't this great to be here they, they didn't do anything they didn't show us any new settings in asgard nothing like that when it came to returning characters like natalie portman and kat dennings they were like well people thought they were funny in the first film so let's just give them more lines but of course the lines they give them aren't really well written and they come off annoying especially kat dennings she was like one of the worst things about that movie is that really? yeah it, to her credit, I think Kat Dennings can be funny, but like when you obviously write just bad material for anyone, it's just going to come off annoying, especially when you write them to be an annoying character. Kat Dennings is from the Two Broke Girls, correct? Two Broke yes, Girls, yeah, that's so, the show yeah. she's on. Indeed. I, I don't even like her on that show. It, just other movies she's been in, I always thought, even the first Thor movie, I thought she was very well used and she was funny. Yeah. It, it's just I didn't like, even know she was in these movies, to be honest. Oh, with really? You. <laughs> I, I really didn't even know that, no. Yeah, like, and then the villain in Thor 2, I would say out of all the Marvel villains, he is the worst. He is like x-men apocalypse bad where like yeah he's just the I'm typical you my i'm gonna uh, everything they built will fall and i will destroy asgard and i'm doing this because i'm evil and my motivation is not really clear it's he's like, like a lego movie yeah <laughs> it's like oh my god like he is so bland and even his design is bland it's just a pale looking lord of the rings elf it's like Oh, I, I know they're called Dark Elves, but come on, you could have done something cooler with these people. It, it was just a very, like, poorly done sequel, just safe and just like, okay, we'll just do more of the same thing. And hopefully if we do more of the same thing, people will like it because we're giving them more. When that's not how you should do a sequel always. That makes sense. That makes sense. And that's my last question, then we'll move on from Ragnarok, but I got one. Fu- uh, one, one last thing What's I would up? like to add in. Anybody who's listening in, as Steve said, we're approaching, like, you know, near the end of Phase 3. For those of you that love tease credit sequences in this movie, stay for both of them. Because the first one heavily teases at that, yeah, we're getting near this end of the finale. And the second one is just a great scene with Jeff Goldblum that ends the movie on that I thought was very hilarious. You know, I'm amazed. I'll just I'll just divert myself. I'll just uh, divert my attention for a second. You know, I am amazed at the amount of people. And I saw this with all oh, with the two Marvel films that I saw this year, Spider-Man and Guardians 2. Yeah. Um, I am still amazed at the amount of people that get up as soon as right? the credits roll for Marvel This movies. time around, a lot of people stuck around. You were you were how, how crowded was your theater? How crowded? I, the theater was sold out. No kidding. Yeah, that happened. I, I heard because I, I was talking to my buddy. He was working. He was an usher at the one theater I go to this weekend. I was going to see LBJ, and he said too. He's like, he's like, yeah, we underestimated Thor. He said, yeah, we really I, did. A lot of people. Did. Like I said, you're coming off of two movies that not a lot of audiences were fan of because of the whole Shakespearean thing might have turned them off. And Thor was always like the le- the lesser grossing of all. Yeah. The mar- now it's like now it's big. Yeah. Now, now it became. Yeah, they big. did something creative like i said in this movie with him in the norse mythology where it's like if you love norse mythology there's a lot of great visuals you're gonna love and they make it really cool and fun that sound that's that's what sounds interesting if anything i'd seek it out for that now the last question i have for you and again i'm not sure if even this is too is totally relevant this is our f- last marvel movie until february you won't have to yeah. wait too long uh how does it set up or at least does it give you anything to anticipate with black panther coming so short it, okay it gives a great ending arc to thor to perfectly go into infinity war the next avengers movie. okay it perfectly ends that's his, coming in may yeah it perfectly ends his story to where it's like this is a perfect arc for the thor movies and a perfect way for him to go into infinity war now it gives a great ending arc to him as for black panther no this does nothing for black panther Blackberry. Okay. Um, that wasn't one whatsoever. I he think. didn't show up. He wasn't crowbarred in. Don't worry. Okay. Um, that wasn't one of the one of, one of the five. <laughs> yeah. The, the, cookies. Yeah. Like you know, Spider Man doesn't swing by you. Then be like, "What's up, Thor?" Like nothing like that. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, it doesn't tease anything with Black Panther. It teases Infinity War, which I thought was like, if you're gonna tease a movie because it sets more in space, 
That should be the one you tease, obviously. Yeah, because I'm, I'm stoked for Black Panther. And I'm looking oh, forward same for here. It. I'm curious, very curious about Infinity War. Not, notwithstanding, too, because you know what? I'm glad that kind of Joss Whedon passed the torch. Same here. Because now they got Anthony and Joe Russo doing that as well. And, you know, they worked wonders with both Winter Soldier and uh, Civil War. 